Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, we've got the structure of the teeth down. Let's go ahead and move it up into the mouth and see if we can fit it into the gums. But the thing is, before I do that, I mean, we're going to need to scale that down a bit. But before we do that, I think what I'm going to need to do is move this mouth sac or break the mouth sac off from the head. Just make it a whole new object because it's going to be hard to see what's going on as we try and fit the teeth in there. Let me just select this edge loop and hit the period key just to frame that up. And now we need to come in here and see what we can find to um, delete. It's kind of a mess in here, I know, and sorry about that. Um, but let's say we want to remove a couple of these edge loops. I'm thinking maybe this one right in here. And maybe this one and this one. We could remove these, I think. Or maybe just... Let's do one at a time and see what we can come up with. It's kind of folding in on itself around in here on the inside of the mouth. And I think we can fix some of this by removing a couple of edge loops. Because we're going to need to remove an edge loop anyway to break this off into its own object. So I'm going to hit the X key and delete faces here. We've still got some overlap. I'm going to try pressing Alt and clicking on an edge between two faces right here and delete these. And we've got a little bit of overlap here, so I think I'll do the same thing here. Now, yours may be different, and that's fine. But ultimately, I think when, when we connect these back up, it's going to be a cleaner connection without all that geometry. Let me just see. I'm going to switch to edge mode here. Click this edge and Alt Shift click this edge. And then I'm going to bridge this. I'm just going to press Control E to bring up the edges menu and click bridge edge loops. And there we go. So now that's a lot cleaner rather than all of the um, geometry we had before. We'll see how that works. I'm going to undo that. and Let's go ahead and go with this for now. So the point of all of this <laughs> was to break this mouth sac off from the rest of the head so we could see inside a little better. Now to break this off, I'm just going to hover over one of the components here like an edge and press the L key and that will select all linked components for that piece. Then I'm going to press the P key to bring up the separate menu and click selection and that will separate that out into its own object. So now you've got the head, you've got the inside of the mouth, and you've got the teeth. I'll just select the head and press H to hide it away. We can always bring everything back by pressing Alt H and that'll bring everything back. But let's just hide this away with the H key. All right, so let's see what we can do here with moving the teeth in. I'm going to scale this down and move it up in here, and let's see what we can do. Not too bad of a fit here. Let's scale it down just a little more. So I'm just looking to try and fit it into the gums and then trying to fit the gums around the teeth, so it's kind of a back and forth process. So for now maybe something like this. Now the trick is is to get the lower teeth in and they're going to be slightly behind here. It looks like I'm going to have to do some adjusting to the gums on the bottom. Now the teeth on the bottom are usually a bit smaller and uh, pushed back a bit. Um, so let's see if we can grab these top teeth. And what I want to do is duplicate them and then mirror them over. Or flip them over, I guess. So all I'll do is hit Shift D to duplicate. And I'll just spin them around on the Y axis. So R, Y, 180. And that spins them around. And let's take these, and I'm going to shrink these in the Z. 
so they're smaller and move them back into the mouth just a bit like that and once I get them in place then I'm going to start moving the gums around them as well now that we've got the teeth in I kind of want to take a look at these back teeth because they seem kind of thin um, if we've got molars and premolars back here I feel like these need to be a, a little bit wider so what I'm going to try, I'm going to try something here and I'm going to come in here and tab into face mode. I'm just going to select these two faces and I've, what I've done is I've come down here and I've turned on enable proportional editing and that allows you to when you hit say the S key you can scroll the influence of the proportional editing with your with your mouse wheel and I'm just going to scroll it out to something like this and then press S and X to scale in the X and just kind of widen some of these out and I can scroll it to make it so something like this maybe I'm just giving it a try here just to make this a little bit uh, wider back here I'm going to select this one grab these two faces hit S and X and scale these out as well just to kind of hint at molars or something back here something like that we'll see how it works alright so let's now see if we can hook the mouth back up to the head so I'll press Alt H to bring back the head and it turns out I deleted things all the way back to the lips here well let's try it we can always add some extra geometry if we need to to build the lips back up so what we've got to do is make the head and the inner mouth all one object again so to do that I'll select both of these objects like this control J to join those two together now I'll tab back into edit mode and go to edge mode and let's select uh, this edge right and this edge with alt shift click and now I believe that's correct let's try and bridge it with control E and bridge edge loops there we go so we've connected those back up but it looks to me like we need one extra edge loop in here to be able to create the lips again so I'll create that and maybe scale now in the Z oh, let's turn off proportional editing down here I'll scale in the Z like that let's see how that works looks like I've got some overlapping points in here I'm gonna to need to come in here and pull some points to get these out back out here like this but other than that I think it's just gonna be a matter of point pulling again so there we've got the teeth and the tongue and the gums in the mouth as I said I need to do some point pulling to make the mouth pretty again but in the next video I think we'll work on putting the eyes in now see you then if you'd like to learn more about blender then join me for my blender scene creation course in it will create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb as we go you'll be introduced to blenders modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode. And as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping, what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles Render Engine 
as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program GIMP to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move, so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.